Next, we're going to talk about the specific immunity or the third line of defense. Let's go over here and talk about first what an antigen is. Let's define antigen. An antigen is anything that mobilizes the immune system and provides an, an immune response. There's two different types of cells in the specific immunity. There's T lymphocytes, which mature in the thymus, and B lymphocytes, which mature in bone marrow. Just get some other definitions out of the way. MHC is major histocompatibility complex. MHC1 is on all cells that have a nucleus, and they stimulate TC cells. MHC2 cells are found only on antigen-presenting cells, or APC cells. And these are only on specialized cells that are in certain places of the body. They stimulate T helper cells, or CD4. Well, let's go back up here then and talk about specific immunity. There's two types of specific immunity. There's cell-mediated and there's humoral-mediated. And the basis of that is bacteria can basically be inside of a cell or bacteria can still remain outside of the cell. The cell-mediated is going to kill bacteria that are inside cells. And in that case, it's just better to kill the cell, make a new one, rather than let it be an incubator for bacteria. The antibody-mediated is going to kill bacteria that are still outside of cells. So let's talk about cell-mediated first, and there's three cells in the cell-mediated. There's TS cells, TC cells, and TH cells. We're not really going to talk about TS cells. It's this, just their job to basically shut everything down after a threat is gone. We will talk about TC cells and TH cells more. What happens for a TC cell is basically it finds an infected cell. This infected cell has taken a little piece of whatever pathogen has infected it, put it in the MHC1 protein and puts it on the outside surface. The TC cell comes along and says that's the pathogen I'm looking for as well. And at that point the TC cell is called activated. Activated TC cells will do two things. It'll make more memory cells. These memory cells will lay in wait for the next time this pathogen comes along. It'll also make more active cells. Those more active cells will go out and search for more infected cells, cells that were infected with that specific type of pathogen. When it finds those infected cells, it'll release three things into that infected cell. Lymphotoxin, cytokine, and perforin. Lymphotoxin will, will disrupt cell metabolism, so basically it'll inhibit the ability of that cell to make ATP. Cytokine will stimulate apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. It's kind of like a self-destruct button. So the TC cell will, will release chemicals that will cause the infected cell to self-destruct. The TC cell will also release perforin, which just like in natural killer cells, will put holes in the plasma membrane of the target cell and cause cell lysis. Remember that MHC1 is found in all cells of the body, so all cells of the body can basically alert TC cells to come in and do this process. Next is a T helper cell, which is found only in APC cells. We'll only find APC cells that are infected. APC cells, when infected, will put out a chemical called, will put out a protein called MHC2. MHC2, when it finds a TH cell that's also looking for that pathogen, will activate that TH cell. Again, the TH cell will make memory cells, which will lay in wait for the next time that that pathogen comes around, and also make more active cells. In this case, when it makes more active cells, those active cells will release cytokines, which are essentially signals, chemical signals, that will talk to TH cells, sorry, will talk to TC cells, will also talk to B lymphocytes. What they essentially would do will stimulate the TC cell. And I'd like you to see the overall picture here, and that is that TC cells are basically ready to respond to any cell that's been infected. So they'll respond to a cut in the hand. T helper cell is only looking for infected APC cells, and APC cells will tend to, will tend to hang out in specific parts of the body, like the lymph nodes. So if you see a TC cell and a TH cell that are responding to the same infection or the same pathogen, it's probably a large infection. So it's good that the T helper cell has found that infection and is also stimulating the TC cells, basically telling it, metaphorically speaking, that this is a big infection and you better kick it up a notch. The other thing the TH cells will do will stimulate B lymphocytes, but let's go up to the top and talk about antibody-mediated systems first. So again, humoral or antibody-mediated system kill bacteria that are outside of the cell. And this is mediated by B lymphocytes. What B lymphocytes will do is they will find the target on their own in the first place, and that's called sensitization. Remember that B lymphocytes tend to hang out on the outside of the lymph node. They see the, th the fluid coming through in the first place, and so they're the first one to see a pathogen as it filters through the lymph node. And that's why it's sensitized first. When the TA cell finds the pathogen and the B lymphocyte is sensitized, they will come together, and now we've got an active, activated or sensitized B cell. When that B cell is activated, it'll do two things again. It'll make memory cells, 
and it'll make more active cells. In this case, the active cells are called plasma cells, and the plasma cells will make antibodies. There's different types of antibodies. There's M, IgA, IgD, IgG, and IgE antibodies. IgM antibodies are basically the first antibodies to be made. IgA antibodies are found in epithelia. IgD are the ones that are actually on the B lymphocytes and allow for sensitization. IgG antibodies are old antibodies, so those are the antibodies in my body that are circulating against chickenpox, so it's an old antibody. And then there's IgE, which are mainly made in response to inflammation. Once you've made the antibodies, how do they kill? Remember, the antibodies don't kill on their own, but they have a few systems to slow down pathogens or also to draw in complement to actually kill a pathogen. The first three, again, are basically to slow down the pathogen. first one is neutralization. Basically, if you surround the pathogen, it can't spread. It can't make itself to a cell to infect that cell. Agglutination is when you clump big things. The picture is clumping red blood cells because that's what happens in a transfusion error. But that's basically, it's probably better to think of those as actually bacteria because if you can clump bacteria up, they obviously can't spread that well and they can't infect that well. Precipitation is kind of the same thing, only the target is small things. In this case, if you have very small toxins or very small viruses, they're basically dissolved in solution, and they can float around at will, so they can spread quite readily. Now, if you clump them up, not only will they not spread as well, but they won't be dissolved anymore. They'll precipitate out of solution, which will severely inhibit their ability to flow around and spread. The fourth thing that antibodies can do is activate complements. And remember, complement can put holes in bacteria, can call in phagocytes, and can stimulate inflammation. So that's basically our 11 by 17 wrap-up of the immune system.